Hi, everybody. This is Tim Erden, author of Statistics in Plain English. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to perform a factorial ANOVA in R. Um, if you are not familiar with R and the R Studio setup with the four windows, um, you might want to take a look at my earlier video that is called um, Descriptive Statistics and Overview of R. And if you are familiar with R, then this should look um, pretty straightforward to you, I think. Um, so in the factorial ANOVA, what you're going, what you do is you are, you have at least two um, categorical independent variables, and um, one uh, dependent variable that's measured on an interval ratio scale. <clears throat> so in this analysis, I am going to use these variables here. So um, self-regulation is the dependent variable and self-regulation is the ability to regulate your own behavior. So for students, um, this includes survey items that ask about things like um, getting your work done on time, uh, focusing your attention, um, managing your time well, things like that. So that's the dependent variable. And then the first independent variable is a measure of com competitiveness. So this asks students um, how important it is for them to do better than other students. And I divided this variable into a high com competitiveness group and a low competitiveness group. So that's a two category variable. And then this variable here is, whoops, generation, uh, which is generational status. So we have first, ge second, first generation, second generation, and third generation students in this sample. First generation are students who were born outside of the US, US and then moved here. Second generation are students who were born in the US but have uh, a mother or a father who was born outside of the US and then moved here. And third generation students are students who were born in the US and both parents were also born in the US. So that is my second um, categorical independent variable. Now, before I run this analysis, I have to um, uh, bring the data in. And so I have read this data into R from uh, SPSS data set that I have. And this just shows the pathway to get to the data on my computer. <clears throat> and then um, I have imported um, some different scripts, some different um, uh, programs, or not programs, but scripts to run the data. So um, there's some in the psych library that I've already run. Um, there's some in the R shape library. So uh, I've imported these uh, scripts for previous kinds of analyses that I've done. And to run the ANOVA analysis of the factorial ANOVA, I installed the R statics package. Um, and uh, that was it. So you should just know that when you're using R, you often need to bring in um, packages that are um, code, basically scripts for codes for different uh, kinds of statistics that you want to run. So I've already done all that. <clears throat> and now um, I'm going to select the data that I want to use for this particular analysis. That is this line here. And that is saying out of this data set that I've already imported, uh, let's just select the variables I'm going to look at in this analysis. So I'm going to run that. And then it's saying to take this competition variable that I had um, in my data set and to treat it as a f um, factor, meaning to treat it as a dichotomous categorical variable. So let me run that. Okay, um, and you'll remember that up here in this window is where the code is, down here is where the output is when you run your analyses. So now I'm going to run some descriptive statistics, and this shows you 
um, the three zeros are all for the low competitiveness group and the three ones are all for the high competitiveness group. And then over here, it shows the different generational groups. So for the low competitiveness group, third generation students, there's 150 of them. This is their mean. This is their standard deviation. This is the standard error of the mean. And this is a 95% confidence interval for the mean. So this line here is what I just read. And then for the second generation group uh, of the low competitiveness group, uh, this is their descriptive statistics. And you can just go on down the line and see um, <clears throat> what's going on for each group. Now in a factorial ANOVA, these would be considered cells. I have two categories of competitiveness, three categories of generational status. That makes six cells and you get means for each cell. And if I look at these, I can see a few things. First, just looking at the three means for the three generational groups in the low competitiveness group, I can see all of them have means around 3.24 to 3.28. So all those means are pretty similar. If I look at the high competitiveness group, I can see that all of these means are higher than all of the means in the low competitiveness group. So right off the bat, I'm looking and I'm going to think, okay, it looks to me like there might be a main effect for competitiveness on the dependent variable, which was self-regulation. It looks to me like the high competitiveness group might have a higher overall mean on self-regulation than the low competitiveness group. And then if I'm looking within the high competitiveness group, I see the second and third generation have similar means, very similar means, 3.43 and 3.47. But this group, the first generation group, seems to have a higher mean. So now I've got a couple of things going on. One, that might make the first generation group overall have a higher mean than the second and third generation groups. So there might be a main effect for generation group that's just being caused by this one right here. And it also tells me that there might be an interaction effect because all of the means are similar in the low competitiveness group, but the means are different in the high competitiveness group. So your average score on self-regulation, um, the relationship between generational status and average score on self gener on self regulation might depend on which competitiveness group you're in and your mean on compet on uh, self regulation the relationship between self regulation and competitiveness group might depend on your generational status so that would be an interaction effect so i'm just just in looking at all of these means i can get some hints about what i think might show up in the anova so now I'm going to go back here, and here's the line to run the ANOVA. So let me run that. <clears throat> and this just gives me one line for the main effect for competitiveness group. And if we look at that, we can see that the F value is 31.95, the P value is 2.08 to the negative eighth power. So that is going to mean moving that decimal point over eight places to the left, which is going to make this a statistically significant result. That little asterisk also tells us that it's statistically significant at the P less than 0.05 level. And the PES right here of 0.032 says that the um, main effect for competitiveness uh, explains about 3.2% of the overall variance in self-regulation. So that's the effect size. And PES is um, partial eta squared. Looking at the main effect for generation, we see that that is also statistically significant. And the um, effect size is quite small of 0.006, um, but it is significant. And then this one is the interaction effect. And the interaction of com 
competitiveness level with generation status on self-regulation is statistically significant. Again, with a pretty small a to squared of 0 0.009, so a little bit less than 1% of the variance is explained by this interaction effect, um, but it is statistically significant. Okay, so we've got the results of our ANOVA. Main effect for competitiveness group is significant. Main effect for generational status is significant. And the interaction between those two on self-regulation is significant. Um, now I can um, do some post-hoc examination. Um, there's only two groups in the competitiveness group. So I don't need to do a post-hoc test on that. If I have a significant result, I just know that the two means are different. Um, so I do need to do one for the generational status. And that is this line right here, because there's three groups there. So I'll run that. And down here, I see a comparison of each generational group with each other generational group. Now keep in mind, this is combining the two um, competitiveness groups together and saying when those two groups are combined, is there a difference between these generational groups? And I'm going to look over here at the p-value um, and see that there's no difference between second and third generation students on self-regulation. First generation students um, are higher in self-regulation than third generation students. And first generation students are also higher in self-regulation than second generation students. So as I suspected from this high mean here, that boosted first generation students average overall and made them um, higher in self-regulation than second and third generation students. So that is the two key postdoc tests. And then finally, I can go up here and I can run what are simple main effects. <clears throat> and this is going to be comparing um, uh, the individual cells together um, to, or to each other. So let's take a look at this first one right here. Let's run this and see what we get and then interpret the output. Whoops, I right clicked when I didn't mean meant to left click. Okay. <clears throat> so what we can see is that when we compare um, the different, um, for the high and low competitiveness groups in the first generation to each other. So within the first generation, actually, this might be the third generation. <clears throat> Let's see. The degrees of freedom here is 215. So, um, no, this is first generation. So if we can add these two together, um, we see that uh, first generation for the low competitiveness group is 65. That's this number right here. And we add it to this number right here, 152. We see that gives us 167. I mean, I'm sorry, it gives us 217. And then the degrees of freedom when you take away two degrees of freedom um, is 215. So within the first generation group, comparing the high competitive to the low competitive, we get a significant difference. Okay, and we can see up here in this level, this line of code <clears throat> that we're saying, let's look at the first generation group and compare self-regulation between the two different competition groups. Okay, now the second line here is doing the same thing, but for the second generation students. And we see again that that difference is statistically significant. So within the second generation group, high competitive and low competitive students differ in their self-regulation. Do the same thing for the third generation group. And again, we get a, uh, here, 
the difference is not statistically significant. So within the third generation group, there's no significant difference. And I'm seeing that right here, the p-value of 0.073, it is almost significant um, at the 0.05 level, but not quite. So the simple mean effects, and if I go back up here and I look at the means, what it's telling me is that this third generation mean of 2.58 is not significantly different from this third generation mean of 2.43. The second generation mean of 2 point, of 3.28 is significantly different from this second generation mean of 3.47. Now you might say to yourself, the difference is between the two second generation means look really similar to the differences between the two third generation means. And I will say that's true, but the sample size is bigger in the second generation group than it is in the first generation group. And that might be why it's a significant difference in the third generation group, but not in the, I mean, in the, it's a significant difference in the second generation comparison, but not in the third generation comparison. And the first generation comparison is, you know, highly significant. This 3.45 to the 0.08 level, that's this. And you can see the effect size is much bigger. 13% of the variance is explained by that difference um, be in self-regulation between high and low competition groups within the first generation compared to this effect size of 1.4% and this effect size of 1.1%. So and that's a lot of information, but that is how you conduct a factorial ANOVA in R.